compassionate reply, and welcome to Great Albums. In this installment, I'll be looking at a classic sophomore album, and one which epitomizes the principle of taking one's sound in a different direction the second time around. The Garden by John Fox, first released in 1981. While The Garden was Fox's second release as a solo artist, it's also his fifth LP overall, as he had spent the late 1970s fronting the original incarnation of Ultravox. Fox's Ultravox was an eclectic mix of influences from glam, punk, and of course, electronic pioneers like Kraftwerk, but it would be the latter of those ideas that dominated Fox's solo career. His 1980 solo debut, Metamatic, is some of the purest, starkest, and harshest minimal synth around, and remains one of the most iconic early works of the subgenre. more like Metamatic from Fox, you'll want to skip ahead to the 1990s, because he turned his back on this thin and aggressively inorganic sound remarkably quickly. While he would produce several more LPs in the 1980s, the group of them seems to grow progressively lighter and softer, with less blistering analog synth and more radio-friendly love themes. But while Fox's third and fourth efforts are often panned, The Garden has actually won itself nearly as many fans over the years as Metamatic proving itself to be powerful in its own ways despite its radically different aesthetic. Where Metamatic dealt in brutalist city blocks and Ballardian psychosexuality, the garden takes place in moldering cathedrals, embracing gothic splendor and an imagined medieval emotionality. Europe After the Rain opens the album and also served as its lead single, becoming a relatively minor hit in the charts. As we hear it, we immediately become aware that Fox has abandoned the instrumental palette of Metamatic, made almost exclusively with an ARP 2600 synthesizer, in favor of something more lush. On Europe After the Rain, traditional instruments like acoustic guitar and piano are impossible to ignore, though the constant bass synth ensures we never forget Fox's roots either. It also seems to be a major thematic leap away from Metamatic, with its tender and romantic feel. Still, that may not necessarily be all there is to it. The song is presumably named after a famous painting of the same title by the surrealist Max Ernst, executed in the early 1940s as World War II was first beginning. Ernst's painting is a sort of apocalyptic vision, in which crumbling structures are overtaken by vegetation, and two figures wander through it, seemingly passing by one another. Perhaps Fox's Europe After the Rain is also a theme for a devastated landscape, its lovers meeting again, the last survivors of some nuclear holocaust. Maybe it isn't too far away from the themes of crushing modernity employed on Metamatic after all. Note as well the emphasis on Europe conceptually. The Garden is, at least partially, a sort of search for a new European cultural identity. The Garden fuses electronics, and hence Europe's characteristic technological achievements, with a love of more traditional European cultural ideals, namely the aesthetics of medieval Christianity. 
For evidence of that idea, look no further than its most obvious apotheosis, the track Pater Noster. Pater Noster is, of course, a setting of the Latin language translation of the so-called Our Father, or Lord's Prayer, one of the most popular and well-known texts in Christianity. Pater Noster is the album's most obvious love letter to the Middle Ages, but an informed listen will show that it has little to do with actual music from that era. I actually could forgive the synthesizers, which might be analogized to the role of church organs, but the percussion-propelled nature of the track is what really makes it feel ahistorical to me. Despite the religious themes of the garden, Fox always averred not being any sort of authentic believer in religion or God, and maintained that he was interested in the traditions of the church purely on aesthetic grounds. Whether you think this sort of appropriation is appropriate and respectful or not, it's certainly one of the album's most prominent themes, and part of what makes it feel as unique as it does. While I've emphasized the themes of romanticism and religiosity, it's also worth noting that The Garden is not a complete break from Fox's earlier works, and in its return to a more guitar-driven sound, it often winds up riffing on something not unlike punk. Astute followers of Fox will have already noticed that the track Systems of Romance shares its title with the third and final LP he released with Ultravox in 1979. Apparently it was written that much earlier, though it wouldn't be seen to completion until several years later. Combining a hard-driving guitar, played by Fox's Ultravox bandmate Robin Simon, with the inscrutable, sensual, elemental lyricism Fox employed throughout his mid-80s oeuvre, the track Systems of Romance really feels like a bridge between 70s art rock and 80s avant synth pop, more so than anything else on the album. Much as Systems of Romance extracts a certain prettiness from punk, so does the aesthetically oriented Night Suit, which plays with appearance, deception, and masculinity.
suit is the track on the garden that I feel is the most exemplary of its own time period. A mysterious ode to a mystical garment that could almost feel at home on an album by Visage. The garden is interested in romantic themes, but Night Suit truly feels a piece among the new romantics. It's got some of the most believable rock influences, with a prominent guitar riff from Simon, and yet its emphasis on the power of fashion and appearances, destructive and perhaps even supernatural, is hard to imagine in a genuine punk context. As it implores us to be someone or be no one, it's easy to fit Night Suit into one of the major themes throughout Fox's career, the tranquility and liberation of personal anonymity. Why is the Night Suit a suit in the first place? This song wouldn't make sense if it didn't deal with a garment that is also a non-garment, something to wear that feels default, neutral, and unassuming, not to mention classically masculine. On the cover of the garden, the main thing we see is, well, a garden. Despite Fox's more obvious personal presence on the albums before and after the garden, it's easy to miss him here, dwarfed by the scale of nature that surrounds him. It's almost like this album is more meant to be about this place and the concept of the garden than it is Fox as a person or any particular perspective of his. While the actual capital R romantics were deeply interested in the sublime and the scenes and moments in which mankind faces its vulnerability and insignificance when compared to the natural world, it's also worth remembering that a garden, by definition, is really not a natural space at all but rather one which is arranged by human hands. Even if this composition resembles those of romantic painters, I think it's worth looking earlier in the European past to interpret this one. Gardens were one of the most prominent symbols in medieval literature, and scholars have suggested that they serve as symbols for sensuality, romance, and the yoni itself. Through the association with the Garden of Eden, gardens often represent a sort of lost but longed for paradise and a return to innocence which is as tantalizing as it is impossible. In particular, Europe after the rain, with its theme of lovers meeting again after the passage of some time, seems to connect with this idea. In hindsight, the garden really stands alone in Fox's career, a masterpiece whose precise style he would never attempt again. We might say it became that Garden of Eden to which the artist could never return. While Fox's interest in medieval spirituality would return on ambient works like Cathedral Oceans, and he would occasionally return to love songs with an electronic backing, the precise combination of lovelorn bardistry with a flair for the Baroque that appears on the garden remains totally singular. Fox's follow-up to this album, 1983's The Golden Section, narrows its thematic focus towards poppy love songs, and its instrumental focus, likewise, is that of a fairly unremarkable mid-80s synth-pop record, but at the same time, I would like to think that tracks like The Hidden Man manage to maintain a sense of the mystical. My favorite track on The Garden is Walk Away. While it lacks the severe and tragic grandeur of the album's title track, which closes the album on a very lofty note, Walk Away shares some of its delicate qualities, reviving the soft piano that we heard on Europe After the Rain. Thematically, Walk Away seems to deal with fragility and transience, and the grave significance that a brief passing moment may have, which makes that delicateness feel all the more poignant in context. Its call and response outro, featuring one of Fox's most anguished vocal performances, really makes it a standout. That's everything for today. As always, thanks for listening. Hey. 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 Hey.